Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here, and I'm going to send you a link to two listings we're going to be putting out. You're going to have about a 24-hour head start on the market and everybody else, so definitely check them out. And so we got seven properties today, including one of the finest properties ever listed in Milton, period. So stay tuned for that. Dill's Crescent's the first one up. It's a semi-detached. Uh, the homes on Dill are very narrow and thin, and, and you go right down the street, and, and you'll find that there's not a lot of homes that even cross 30 feet wide. Uh, $3,99 is the price on this one. And so you've got your eat-in area right across from your kitchen. Then the family room is, is uh, basically over. Over here so you've got the back of the house is your kitchen then you've got just a narrow front room uh, photos at Twilight don't really do great things for a, a house and how it displays uh, the light coming in is certainly something that uh, that does help a listing out some of the outside shots are obviously taken during the daytime 3d9 for this model it really depends how big it is it's not terrifically I mean even this third bedroom is nine and a half by about nine that's pretty tight. I mean, you can't have much more than maybe a crib in there. Uh, it might be good for maybe a home office. The other one's 10 by 10, and that's sort of where you just start to feel like it's the right size for a kid maybe over seven or eight years old. And then uh, the master is basically the whole back of the house, the uh, 17 by 10. So anyways, it's okay. I mean, it's not, I, I'd rather even crank up the price by 10,000 or jump to a townhouse, like even this one on Hobbs. And I just find you get a little bit more, uh, and, and you just feel that the street maybe has a little bit more variety. Lots of siding up on on uh, on the other one. Don't know if it's my favorite street in town. Hobbs Crescent, this one here is at 405. And so inside, I mean, same kind of thing as a long, narrow living dining room. You get to the back, there's the kitchen uh, with an eat-in area. And you can, this is the only uh, shot that they have really of that nice, beautiful green space behind. I would have definitely devoted another photo to to it, no doubt about it. Big master bedroom here. Uh, and then you also have a finished basement. So there's there's a couple shots of bathrooms here. Would it have been better to put either the finished basement or the green space behind? I think so. But again, these guys are acting as their own listing agents. Little things that you think about uh, doing this every single day that maybe someone who's doing it just for the first time selling on their own may not always realize. So Haxton Heights, 4095, it's a 1,500 square foot. We've seen a lot of these for sale and sold. It's called the Hillsview End, 1510 square feet. And 409, it basically looks, There's they say there's 10,000 in upgrades. They don't mention what they are, which I think is a little bit, uh, I don't know if, if it would be the best strategy. And uh, there's no hardwood or anything like that. It looks like there's stainless steel appliances, the fireplace they would have spent a little bit for uh, to the builder. But yeah, it, I don't know. It's probably, they're going to do okay. I mean, I don't know if they'll get ass price, but they'll certainly be within a few percentage points of it. Um, Irving Terrace is 414. It's an 1,800 square foot home. Hardwood floor on the main level. And they could have taken some stuff out of here. I mean, those things on top of the shelf, with and without them, it would have made a much different impression. And uh, even that blanket on the couch. These are all subtle things that... I mean, you probably notice them more when you're visiting the house, but if you really think about those polished listings, those ones that just really hit you online, those are the ones that take into consideration those minor details. Uh, and then you've got your upstairs too. Um, it says a separate entrance. It's a neat layout because when you come in from your garage, you actually have the entrance, so you can actually create a separate entrance in your garage. They may have something on the side of the house, uh, but maybe it's set up as an investment property. It's pro it's within a pretty fair range given what the other ones have sold for. Beaver Court, we haven't seen one of these in a long time. They are loaded with space. There's a lot of space on these. It's like a raised bungalow, back split style. And uh, so you go in the front door, there's some stairs going up to the living room. And you can see that front door, stairs coming up. You've got your living room here. Then there's a kitchen also on this level. So living, dining, kitchen. And it looks like they've uh, changed the cabinets out. And everything looks clean and organized. You can see they've done their furnace, their AC, all those kind of things. And that matters too. There's your upstairs. There's three bedrooms up there. You've got a family room on the lower level, which walks out. So if you're a creative investor, that can be a separate entrance. And you can start to work with these and create uh, 
two and three family homes. The legality of that is a whole different story. You want to look into that from the town, but there's some creative things that you can do with split level homes if, uh, if you're thinking of keeping them as investment properties. And there's an unfinished area in the basement. I think these go, I think they're five different levels, most of them. And uh, yeah, 439, I think is right in line with, uh, we haven't seen one sell in a long time. So we saw, I think the last one was in the low fours and that was, I think last year or something. So they should do good. I think that if people appreciate the fact that all the work's been done, all the unsexy stuff, the furnace and everything else, that'll definitely help them out too. So Philbrook is 49.7. Uh, it's a Thistle Bay 2237 square feet. Looks like you've got two car parking in the driveway. And if it's on Philbrook, there's a good chance that it's facing the, uh, the parkland, which is always a good thing. And so in the back, a bit of a shed there. Uh, you do have some hardwood floors that looks like hardwood floors. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the front living room. It kind of looks like it because you've got your front porch potentially over there. But they've sectioned off the living and dining room or two separate rooms. So that front room now uh, is a little bit easier to create something different compared to if you had the combined living dining room. The separation allows you to do a lot more. Now, there's your family room there. And uh, everything looks good in this home. It's an eight-foot ceiling. You can tell by just the, the distance here. This model really has a, a the, the difference between the eight and the nine foot ceiling to me is dramatic. You really notice it in this model. Uh, and if you're looking at buying one, I don't know if they sell them anymore. I don't think they do, but the uh, the nine foot is definitely a great upgrade. They didn't have it on this one. 49.7, we've seen them sell well into the fives. And I think that they're, uh, they've priced this one aggressively and it should get some action. I mean, that's a good amount of square footage for 490. Uh, and then finally, we have that listing I told you about. So one of the best listings ever in Milton, 5,500 square feet of living space. And do you think the listing agent is maybe pimping the, the he wants you to know definitely who's listing this home. And Eric's a great friend of, uh, of the show as well. He's a super dude, a great real estate agent too. So um, this home, yeah, so 5,500 square feet of space. You've got a pie-shaped lot. Uh, you could put a pool on this size of property, and when you get inside, I mean, you've got the wainscoting that's done, that's done the eight-foot door in front. I mean, those are, it's just beautiful. It shows like a model home, uh, tremendous kitchen, granite countertops, every upgrade you could probably think of. The fireplace looks terrific, and one of my favorite parts about this home is actually the finished basement. You can see how many pot lights are down there. I'm not sure what kind of floor that is, if it's maybe a cork floor or something like that, but it looks very cozy, very comfortable. There's a part in the basement. There's a separate little bedroom. Uh, unbelievable space. And then if you check the virtual tour, you can actually see some of the shots of the yard. And that was the first thing that I went to to check out the size of the yard. It's not completely secluded and private. And if you know, we're the current record holders for the highest sale ever in New Milton at 939. And the property we had had less finished space and it was a little bit older than this one. I might even argue that this one beats beats the model we sold inside. Um, but the one that we sold had complete privacy, a pool and all those kind of things. So it's really a question of, of just where the buyers see the value. But if you add up uh, even how much it would cost to put this home together. If you visited the Heathwood uh, Builder site, you can't touch anything in there for this price, um, it, it, you know, for, for what you're actually getting on, on a resale end. So wonderful opportunity. I'm really rooting for this one. Even if it breaks my record, I'd be thrilled because it's a, it's an absolutely magnificent home. So that is, uh, that's the list for today. And if you have any questions, if you want to see anything, especially if you want to go see this one on Playfair, cause I'm dying to see it, give us a call and we'll definitely go, uh, go check them out and make sure that you're definitely staying safe throughout your process, that you know, everything that's happening and there's no surprises. So have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow with more Milton Daily Homes.